welcome. Thank you for everybody for joining us. Um, I know, I hope everyone had a chance to listen to the keynote that Ross and Martin did a little bit earlier today, talking about our launching the Linux One Emperor 4 and some of the great work that City has done with us with Mongo. And today we wanted to dig in a little bit more into the details of the solution and how we're implementing some sustainable solutions using MongoDB and Linux One together, as well as talk to um, a few of our other clients and their experiences also with Mongo. So I'm happy to have here joining us today, Martin Kennedy, right, Managing Director at City, Tina Tarquinio, who's our Director of Linux One Product Management. Um, we've got Brian Young, the CEO of Home Lending Pal, and we've also got with us Joe Drumgool, who's the Senior Director of Development Relations at MongoDB. So guys, thanks for uh, joining me here today. So um, I am going to start with you, Martin. Um, what big trends have you been seeing? You talked a little bit about what you guys have been working on, but what big trends have you been seeing in IT kind of in the past, and what are you starting to see today? Yeah, so I, I, I've been doing this long enough to kind of have been through most of the journey, right? And, and I think, you know, what we've seen over time is, you know, it's, things started out 20 or 30 years ago with, you know, a consolidated data center, you know, a traditionally mainframe infrastructure. And then we, we evolved into the whole client server, you know, environment and, and you know, kind of a, a hybrid mainframe client cent, uh, server infrastructure. Then we went to virtualized servers and, and then we went into, you know, cloud, public and private cloud. You know, what I can tell you is that, you know, just kind of you know, on the sustain sustainability theme, right? You know, you, you kind of go from what was a, a small data center to something that's sprawling, you know, all over the place. You know, we, I think the industry in general struggled with, you know, servers that were running 10% utilization and then that kind of, you know, forced this whole virtualization, you know, effort, which, you know, was somewhat successful, but we really never got very high levels of utilizations. Um, and, you know, what that yielded was basically the data centers getting bigger and bigger and with more space and power and cooling requirements. And to the point where, you know, it, it, it's not sustainable anymore. Right, it's, it's really, you know, it's really at the point now where we have to kind of take a step back and look at how we're hosting workloads and figure out how to really improve the virtualization capabilities like what we're doing with, with Mongo and Linux One, you know, and or, you know, look at, the, look at the programming models themselves. Like a lot of this, you know, kind of, you know, started, I guess, when, you know, with, with you know, the, the whole notion of kind of make application development more agile and, and easier to do and faster to do, but the, the offset there was that we kept throwing hardware at it. You know, it really was not an efficient programming model. Like, if you go back to the beginning, like when I first started programming, you would sit there and count instructions and count bytes of memory, and you were very, very efficient at the way you, you manage code. It's like, like the K-Lock story with Windows. Like, you were very, very efficient about the way you did things. And that kind of, you know, kind of went to the, to the side as these programming models have evolved, right? So there's, there's a lot that I think needs to be done as we move forward, right? And, and you know, and, and it gets complicated because on top of everything else, we're doing a lot of analytics. Uh, those kinds of servers use GPUs. Those things are very, you know, mm -hmm. they consume enormous amounts of power and create, you know, anybody that has, that's ever had a video chip in, a, in, a, in their, their home PC knows how much heat those things create, right? So th mm -hmm. those things are big culprits. So we need to kind of figure out how to attack some of those bad, you know, bad pieces of the data center. And, and mm -hmm. the Telem processor, I think, is a way that p perhaps can, can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we really got some work to do there. Mm -hmm. But in general, the notion of custom silica to me is actually something that I think, you know, we really, you know, need to look at, you know, uh, build customized chips that, you know, basically do the specific function we need as opposed to having to use a general purpose thing that uses a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of energy. Right, and, and look, I'll, I'll kind of just put the challenge to the open source community. Like, I think it's time that you, you folks have to participate in, in, in the solution, right? We, we have to kind of think about the way we're building, um, we're building, you know, code and, and source mm -hmm. and things like that and kind of figure out how efficient it is or it isn't. You know, like, I think one measure of success about a, around a piece of open source should be how efficient is it mm -hmm. as we try to really address the sustainability yeah. problems we have globally. And talking about efficiency and sustainability and AI, I want to pass this over to, to Tina Martin, and thank you. Um, you build a little bit more. Martin was talking about AI, the analytics we want to do, being able to scale. What, in your mind, right, from all the product management and working with the teams and getting to the Linux One launch, do you find exciting about the Linux One Emperor 4? 
I will try to keep my answer short because I think there are a lot of exciting things. To talk about. <laughs> We're all here to talk about it, but I'll talk about too. Just to pile on, I think uh, Martin's comments about sustainability. We really designed Linux One to be um, something that could address these needs that Martin's talking about, the server sprawl. So Linux One can really handle the work up to 2000 x86 cores. And so not only is that remarkable, but it reduces the energy you need by up to 75% and the floor space by up to 90%. So you can really make a dent in all of those servers that you have doing various things, not to mention, you know, just the, the upkeep of licenses and maintenance and fixes, you know, you can do that on one server instead of thousands of them. So to me, I think that's really spectacular. Linux One has three um, built in accelerators on the chip, which I think is really phenomenal um, to talk about specialized CPU. And it's really a cloud in the box, right? So you can run tens of thousands of workloads with those uh, special accelerators on chip, and you can completely isolate every workload. So it truly is like a cloud in the box. And to me, if I had to just pick two, which I could pick a lot, but those would be the two, I think, most exciting things about the Linux One launch that, we're gonna, that we've introduced yesterday. Awesome. And we're going to pass it one more to Brian. Thanks, Tina. So tell me. So we've heard about City, what City's doing with MongoDB, why they're choosing Linux One and expanding there. Why did you choose to run services on Linux One? Yes, yes. So um, the first part is, you know, Home Lending Pal is taking a lot of sensitive financial information. We're, we're pulling their credit. We're pulling their, their bank account information and storing that on the server itself. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, when we really looked at it, we wanted to find a way to to grow in scale, but also to be climate conscious as well. I mean, we look at just the way that climate change is happening across the world. Uh, a perfect example is in Antarctica with the Doomsday Glacier. Um, that melting is expected to increase sea levels by 16 feet. So for us, it was like, you know, how can we have a solution that really serves our needs and our purposes of our clients while also keeping them safe and protected as well? Uh, and, you know, I believe that the Linux One solution really offers a lot of great sustainability benefits, uh, but also has uh, savings in it as well in, in terms of the on-chip uh, encryption that it has, the AI acceleration, the data compression. Um, but then we also have to think about the, the scalability of what we're building as well and how we keep that information secure for our clients. You know, we have a lot of people that are giving us a lot of very sensitive information and very sensitive data. Uh, and we think about that in our IT infrastructure. You know, how do we uh, provide these solutions while also being conscious of the climate? And I think it's a perfect solution for a startup like ours that is looking to, to try to make a difference in both uh, how we save energy, but also how we help, uh, help other individuals in the, in the world as well. Yeah. Totally. And Joe, I know we're kind of going down the line here, so <laughs> I'm not meaning to be that linear. So you've heard, right, Brian, Martin using Mongo, right? We've partnered as IBM with MongoDB on the full stack. You mentioned the full stack has to work together and innovate together, right, to really drive that value from the infrastructure all the way up. Tell me a little bit about Mongo um, and what you're doing to innovate and to bring the value. Our customers and, and Home Lending Pal, who is doing a transformative thing in my mind, enabling people to buy their own houses, and of course, City, who's been, as long as I've been in tech, City's been in tech and, tra and transforming the way that people engage with financial institutions. Our customers want to move fast and not break things. Breaking things is bad, and the point of MongoDB is to enable you to agilely build diverse, constantly changing applications. We all know how fast a modern mobile app gets updated. We all know how the world can change literally overnight and suddenly we're going to have to produce the most amazing digital transformations. It's only with the agility of a platform like MongoDB and the agility of a platform like Linux One are you able to address those changes, scale up incredibly fast, and most importantly, incredibly securely? And with MongoDB, you can also scale down again. We've all seen the big dips. As somebody said to me recently, every graph we're going to draw for the next 10 years is going to have a little star on it that just says COVID years. <laughs> and so we want to be able to handle COVID years. Whatever the next COVID year will be, you're only going to do that with a combination of an amazingly agile, scalable database platform and amazingly agile, scalable hardware platform. 
but you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's got to be sustainably scalable. And so the idea of running a secure platform with a low energy footprint, huge win for customers of both MongoDB and Linux One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Joe. We can pass it back to Martin here for a minute, and we're going to change gears and look forward. So uh, totally, right? Security, scalability, but be sustainable, right? So. Martin, can you talk a little bit more about the solution, right? The implementations, what you overcame with that implementation, right, at City, and then looking ahead, right? How are you taking those steps to scale that solution and bring even more? So. Well, yeah, as I mentioned in the talk this morning, we are looking at other DBMSs and other technologies. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're working Shame with them. On you. <laughs> <laughs> Mongo is a good is a good solution. I'm not I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. I'm just, but obviously, you know, we're in a, in, a, in a place like City, it's a very we have a, a, a heterogeneous mix mm -hmm. of work. You know, we, I mean, we we run a lot of technology, so we want to try to find ways to host the remainder of the estate on something like a Linux one that is a, a very efficient place to host things. You know, you know, we we've also got a lot of work going on in our, a private cloud solution. You know, we've been working with uh, the the Red Hat team extensively mm -hmm. on. To, on, you know, again, a great partner in this whole story because Red Hat is the, you know, the kind of the foundation of everything that we're running. But we're looking at, at OpenShift and basically, you know, porting over the components we need to ensure that OpenShift runs very efficiently on Linux One. So a container strategy is is clearly something that's in our future. You know, we have a public and private cloud, you know, strategy that that's in our future. And uh, you know, as I mentioned, I think people really need to look at how the um, the development of systems is progressing, right? Like, you know, if, you, if you have a relational DBMS that requires two terabytes of RAM, you know, I would kind of contend something's wrong. So I, I think people are starting to, to look at application architectures and kind of evolve those things to be more efficient. Because, uh, you know, the sustainability challenge is, is a real one, and, and it's going to require a, a lot of collaboration from each you know, pillar of the, the infrastructure and the application world in order to really, you know, be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And Brian, let's move. So we move to you. Martin's talking about how oh. we're going to scale, right? right. Um, and so, if we, yeah, we can go ahead and give it, give it over to Brian Martin. Thank you. And sorry. And how are you looking to scale? So I know we're working with Martin, partnering very closely, like you said, with Red Hat, bringing more and more to that OpenShift ecosystem, continuing to work with Mongo, with Red Hat, with right the entire open source community, a lot of which right are here and we're partnering with every day, right, to work on upstreaming changes, working with the community and make sure that it's taking advantage, right, of the AI, of the security that we're kind of bringing and that is needed, right, as long as being able to get that data density, right, into um, your organizations. So as you look forward, right, and hopefully you're going to grow, right, and, and scale Home Lending Pal, um, what are you looking to do and what are you looking for from the platform to help with that growth and to scale? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously it's growth. Uh, you know, our goal by 2030 is to have at least 3 million users on the platform. Uh, just in this conference alone, we, we've had requests to come to the UK and Australia, so that seems like okay. it's going to be even more Good. growth. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is that we're collecting a lot of data, and, and the other aspect of our platform is that we're actually allowing these individuals to automate the process of applying to a lender, which means that we have at least two years or more of their sensitive information, their sensitive data as well, which is it's critical for us to think not only about the sustainability of the solution, but also the security of the platform as well to ensure that, you know, because one hack basically ends everything for us uh, as a startup. And so we look at it as, you know, how do we scale? How do we efficiently grow with the platform? But then also, uh, how do we look at the decisions we're making right now to get to that 2030 goal in a way that does not slow down or bog down the system, but also ensures that our users' personal information is highly protected because that is rule number one for us. Mm -hmm. Like we have to make sure that we protect their personal data. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's really what we look at and, and kind of having a, a corporation like IBM behind us to support these decisions really helps us uh, understand how to grow and scale mm -hmm. for that goal. Yeah, and I love, right, that we're taking advantage of the technology everywhere from City and your scale and you starting up with it and growing because, I mean, we heard earlier today, right, the cost of that data breach over $2 million now. Um, and so that's not something you can absorb, right? So it's something I'm really glad, right, to be working with you um, and getting the security as well as that, you know, future scale and sustainability. Absolutely. So thanks, Brian. Um, all right, so Joe, 
looking forward for you, um, what's MongoDB looking at next and working to bring so to the platform? We, we've been building a new technology in MongoDB every year, and one of the biggest challenges we have is letting people know the cool stuff that we're doing. But you've got to understand the fundamental substrate of MongoDB is a distributed database. Now, we know our colleagues in the industry use lots of different databases, but if you want a database that can start on three cores on Linux One and move to occupy all of them, that is where MongoDB really gives you the value. You can scale up and scale down. You can use it like a cloud. And that, for me, is a huge opportunity. And you get to run it and its application in the same secure envelope. That's what sets Linux One apart from I'm racking and stacking my Dell servers together and gluing them together with, you know, TCP IP cables. That's like, that's hard work. Um, but what MongoDB is constantly bringing you is brand new innovation. So in the last couple of years, we've added time series collections for really efficient time series management of data. We just announced column store indexing for doing your analytical data. But the, the innovation I'm most excited about is queryable encryption. Queryable encryption is a brand new technology. We actually acquired a company that had been working on this for a long time. You can encrypt your data on the client. You can encrypt the query on the client. And you can return range-based results based on an encrypted query to an encrypted data set. Why do you want to encrypt data in the client? Because you want the data in memory to be encrypted. So it's an additional layer of security on top of the amazing security that you get with Linux One. We want to make sure that every part of a customer's application is secured, including stuff outside the data center you're normally in. So huge partner with Linux One. If you're building large-scale distributed applications that need to scale from one core to a thousand and back down again, MongoDB and Linux One are perfect partners for that. Mm -hmm. Scalability and secure. So thanks, Joe. And uh, with that, Tina. Um, heard about scalability, security, right, sustainability. What is Linux One and Linux One Emperor 4 in particular doing to, as you're in client meetings and meeting with partners and analysts, what is it doing to prepare uh, organizations for the future? Yeah, I mean, as I sit here, really, it's, I feel like it's our job to make sure Martin, Brian, and Joe have the infrastructure underneath <laughs> to support these, these missions they yep. have. I mean, that's really what we're aiming for. So. I think the first I would mention is truly like ultimate flexibility, right? So if you think about it, I mean, as I loved, not that I love the asterisk on COVID years, but I like the way you phrased it, you know, we didn't know what was coming, but we wanted to make sure that our infrastructure was ready for it. And there could be another asterisk coming and we want to make sure that our clients are prepared. So it's really ultimate flexibility. You can add capacity and memory on demand. You can run your choice of uh, distro. You a huge range of ecosystem partners that are running on the platform. and growing every day, right? So ultimate flexibility, especially in the open source world. But pair that with um, total security, right? So uh, Joe mentioned encryption. Linux One Emperor 4 has uh, the industry first enterprise Linux um, quantum safe system. That means that um, data that you're collecting now will be safe <laughs> in the future because we have to store this data for a long time as you know, Brian so well articulated. Yep. And it's not that far from now when quantum computers will be strong enough to crack classical encryption, as we call it. And so uh, Linux One Emperor 4 actually has quantum safe encryption now. You can leverage the APIs to protect your data, um, build it in your applications now so that you're ready when that happens, right? And, you know, Martin and I have a Citibank card, so I hope you guys are doing that. Um, but, I mean, that's the type of protection that we want. <laughs> that's the type of protection that we want to make sure um, our clients can pass on to their, their end clients. Um, and like I said, complete flexibility as well as resiliency, right? So, you know, you can, um, you know, repair memory on demand. You, I mean, all of the ways we have built re resiliency into every level of the system, right? I mean, that's what we're providing our partners um, going forward. Awesome. So. I would have one final question. You guys can answer it in any order you would like. Um, but what? <laughs> Gina passes the, the hot potato to Brian. So, just real, what in your mind is the coolest part of your job, or is getting you up in the morning? Right, as you kind of keep putting all in, working together, finding the best solutions for your clients. I mean, what's what's your coolest part day to day, and you're most excited about? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, we're mixing mission and margin for a lot of organizations, uh, particularly for, for banks, you know, the meeting their mm -hmm. Community Reinvestment Act requirements. And we have to do that for big banks such as City, hopefully, one day, and then also smaller banks such as credit unions. And that is a very different paradigm for each one that you have to deal with. So having a technology provider like IBM, like Mongo behind us that is innovating behind us to ensure that we're able to meet the security requirements to work with these lending, lending institutions is is awesome for us. You know, uh, I had a lot of people last night, and even when I met with Jeff, he was like, how did you get here? Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, being a startup and having that opportunity to be able to go into rooms and know that, you know, you can pass a vendor onboarding audit that, you know, that the data itself will be safe. And then even from a consumer's perspective, knowing that we're collecting so much of their personal financial and credit information, and it is encrypted, it is secure, you know, we don't have to worry about being hacked as much as others, you know, that mm -hmm. is a, a, a life changing and a, and a savior for us. And we've seen mm -hmm. the growth already in these asterisk years so far, you know, while mm -hmm. everyone else is kind of dipping in the mortgage space, our user base is already growing because of that. And I think that would not happen awesome. without these partnerships, so. Awesome, thanks, Brian. So. Oh, Joe, looks like, looks, like, looks, like you're, looks like you're next, so come on, Joe. Um, so, I mean, I'm a geek at heart, and like when I can finally get off my Zoom calls during the day, I like to like look at technology, but clearly, you know, it's kind of tricky for me to get access to a mainframe. And so, while I've known MongoDB and, and mainframes have been a match made in heaven for a while, I didn't have an opportunity until about a month ago when we started talking about this event to really sort of invest time in learning about this platform. And so for me, it's like I always feel smarter when I learn a bit more about a platform that our customer has been using. And like I'm slightly in awe of Linux One, and I, that takes a bit of a leap for me because I've been doing this for like 38 years. Um, so I, I like when I look at the power of what people can do with something like Linux One, I'm like, what's next? I want to know what's coming next. And for me, it's strange to have been in this industry for so long and, and to look at the fact that IBM was right at the forefront of what I was doing when I was leaving college in 1986 and is still at the forefront of what I'm doing nearly 38 years later. Um, I, I'm a little awestruck by that, and uh, you know, I'm a bit of an IBM booster, I hate to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that I work with one of the best teams in the world, and, and the best clients and partners. I mean, what, what we're able to bring to market in terms of the value and like you said leading edge right we're looking ahead to be quantum safe we're making sure you can scale and do it flexibly and and all that to boot to be sustainable right with the energy crisis that we're you know all seeing today that's more and more important right and working all the way across the stack as you were saying right whether it's rel and openshift and mongo and you know, working across um, hyperprotect, right? We have choices and flexibility and awesome tech looking to the future. That's, that's yeah, leading edge show. So I'm, I'm really glad, right, to get you on board <laughs> and be the, the booster, right? And uh, yeah, Tina, so. Uh, the coolest part of my job is really events like this where you get to see the technology <laughs> you, you work on day in and day out come to life Yeah. Um, through different ways, right? I mean, hearing what Brian's doing, but also what Martin's doing. I mean, this is, I mean, at IBM, we, we really, really lean into co-creating with our clients, right? So we yep. spend a lot of time with them asking, what are your pain points? What could we do that would make it an opportunity for you? We spend so much time doing that. So um, to see it come to life and really make a difference for our clients, I mean, to me, that is, it's really about working with the, our clients and our IBM teams to make that happen. Emphasis on yeah. so much time. Startups. <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoy that. So yeah. we're, we're, happy to we're, we're all geeks at heart too, like Joe. And so the more we get to work with that variety of clients and see all the different ways people are really using yes. what we're putting out there, I mean, that's what gets us up in the day. Yeah, right? that's Tina? really the best part. It's yeah. Me. So, hey, Martin. Yeah, so I guess for me, uh, you know. I have to be honest with you, I've been with City a long time, and I can tell you I've never been bored one day in my life there, you know. But more importantly, it's the team of people that we have there that I work with. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to sincerely tell you it's one of the best technology teams I think that there is. And they're uh, constantly looking to improve our systems and every aspect of them with security, cyber, and and to innovate, you know, it's it's essentially a place where innovation is allowed and encouraged, you know, and and so we we.
we have done so much, you know, over the years in terms of evolving our businesses. We're a very global company, and that actually, you know, as my IBM colleagues will tell you, every country has a different set of regulations that really need special consideration. And the, the team of technologists and our partnership with, with IBM, Mongo, and, and, you know, and all of the vendors we do business with is what really motivates me every day. It's every day is an exciting day. I always have five or six big problems on my plate and you know the, the team of people that we work with you know it's just such a pleasure to work with them it's just a, it's such a great place to work but it's you know it's, it's really all about you know making our banking applications and our client experience as good as they possibly can be and that again is you know it's a function of basically embracing technology be, being willing to in, innovate working with our technical partners in the in the vendor space to make it happen and you know it's 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 really it's an exciting place to be right now. I think we have a lot of challenges in front of us that I think there'll be a lot of innovation that'll be brought to bear to fix it. And, you know, I can't wait to get back to the desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I know you mentioned all the regulations yeah. and I know it was mentioned earlier at Ross over, you know, 2,500 right, rules and regulations yeah. and policies worldwide right now looking at sustainability. So you've got security regulations, you've got to meet privacy regulations with the data you're holding, right, sustainability and ESG goals yeah. we're all trying to attain. So like you said, all working together, right, as one up the stack to bring that, right, innovation to bear to, to help solve those is, is awesome. So um, thank you. Right, all for joining us. I know we've got all of you guys before your lunch hour. Um, Linux One, Emperor Four, just if you want to hear any more about that, I encourage you, oh, we got it up here, to visit the IBM booth. Um, we got some cool demos. We've got uh, the Space Rover. You can kind of play with a demo of moving MongoDB workloads uh, over. It's actually using OpenShift and Rackham to move it over to Linux One. So a lot of cool stuff. Um, Linux One in the community cloud. You can learn more about that. So I encourage all of you to talk to uh, Tina and I um, or anybody here if you have any questions afterwards and to visit our, our booth and learn more. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for the panel here for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>